hello and welcome or welcome back today's topic of discussion is going to be client closets you are probably here because you are interested in starting a client closet or you have questions about starting a client closet so I hope I can answer all those if you don't know what a client closet is a client closet is often a wardrobe that a photographer would keep on hand to rent or loan or um, let clients wear during their shoots to kind of make life a little easier for them. Let's get right to it. Okay, well first things first, why would you have a client closet? What are the benefits? The first reason that I keep a client closet is because it is very helpful to clients. It's very helpful for clients to know that you have something to kind of help them out. Specifically for moms, moms really seem like they are the hardest to dress. A lot of the time I'll get messages from the mom with tons of pictures of clothes for the kids and husband's already coordinated and she says just one more time she's going to run to the mall real fast just to find herself something to wear. So having some things on hand, some pictures of dresses or items that you can send to her to kind of ease that tension, show her that, you know, she doesn't need to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on herself because that's another thing that moms really have a hard time with. I also noticed because we do live in a place that has a lot of tourists, it kind of eases the mind of people who are visiting. It's one less thing you have to put in your suitcase because I have lots of things for you to wear. It's one less thing you have to worry about when you are getting ready for a long trip. Usually Hawaii is a very long trip. Having a client closet also helps you stay very consistent. When you are starting a photography business and you are wanting to attract a certain client, having photos of what you want to photograph and the style that you want to represent, having that in your portfolio already is very helpful. Meaning you have dresses in your client closet that fit the style that you want to photograph. So by using these dresses, you are keeping things very consistent. People know what they're getting with you. It kind of also triggers people to dress a certain way for their photos with you. So future clients will see a distinct style from you, even if they are your dresses. And if they don't want to wear anything that you have, they will still like those photos and it will kind of help gear them towards what they want to wear and just be a visual aid to help them choose their styles. When it's not client related, a client closet or having a wardrobe on hand is really helpful for last minute things. There has been last minute model shoots I want to do or there's a location I want to check out and it's super easy just to have things on hand and ready to go. Grab a dress, grab a model, go explore. It's just one less thing you have to worry about. I've also had sessions that are very last minute. I've had, especially maternity seems to be a thing where it's very last minute. They didn't want photos, but they're due in two weeks and now they do really want photos. So it's kind of handy. They don't have time to buy anything. They're probably already not feeling the best about themselves. So going shopping and trying a bunch of things on is not not on the list of things to do or a list of things that they want to do. So it definitely comes in handy to just already have stuff, send some photos, let them choose, and now you have a client that maybe would have gone someplace else that had a client closet if you didn't have one because it just made life so much easier. Okay, so let's talk about a few things that maybe would be not so appealing about having a client closet, like some of the things that you need to think about before you start one. The first one is that you have to spend money. Sorry, there's really there's a few ways around it that we'll talk about, but for the most part, you have to be prepared to spend a little bit of money. You can't really just collect things, beautiful things anyway, good quality things without spending money. So just make sure it's something that you're aware of. The better quality of items that you buy, the more you spend, the better stuff you're gonna get. You know, it's kind of give and take. Having a client closet also takes up a lot of space. My husband will attest to that. We do live in kind of a smaller house here in Hawaii, so one whole closet in a bedroom is pretty much all client closet. So if you don't have a lot of space, I would say be a little more selective about what you have. I have a lot of things just because I get a little obsessive and I love things and I hold on to things, 
but if you don't have a lot of space you can very easily get away with having maybe five to ten really really good pieces that people want to use you don't have to have a ton of stuff but just be aware of space you do have to you do have to be able to put them somewhere another thing to think about would be that helping your client style themselves with your client closet does take a little bit more time and it's a little bit more work on your part normally you would talk to a client pick a location you would discuss a little bit what they want to wear and she they would maybe send you pictures but when you're working with your client closet it kind of ends up being more work on your side let's say for example that you are just styling the mom you need to send her photos you need to have her try on dresses or items before your shoot i don't care what anybody says you cannot just show up to a shoot she might not like it and then she's feeling insecure you have to either take them some dresses to try on or you have to send them tons of photos and measurements for everything or even I've had you know a few people that live in the area just come on over and play dress up however you end up doing it it does end up taking a lot more time to plan the shoot not a whole lot of time it's definitely worth it but be aware that you can't just have a closet full of things send them pictures and they're just gonna be okay with it Letting them try things on especially makes them fall in love with the item and feel beautiful and know how they're going to do their hair and it really is helpful to let them try stuff on, even though it takes more time. The last thing that I would say is a con to having a client closet is taking care of the items. So oftentimes before a shoot I will have to... Um, steam or iron the item obviously make sure it doesn't get wrinkled on the way there we do shoot on the beach a lot here or in creeks or in fields and long dresses especially which are my favorite tend to get drugged through the mud if you will it's definitely time-consuming to not only prep the dress for your shoot, but once you get home it's straight to the washer straight to the dry cleaner however you need to take care of that dress so before the shoot's a little more work, after the shoot's a little more work because now this is a piece you've invested a lot of money in or you just love it. It doesn't have to be an expensive item, but you just love it, so you want to take care of it. So just kind of keep that in mind. When you're picking items for your client closet too, it's a lot easier to go with stuff that's not, not maybe dry clean only, stuff that cleans really well, just to kind of make your workload a little bit quicker when you get home from your shoot. All right, let's talk about the kinds of items that I think you should have in your client closet. While I do think it's important to have items in your closet that are on trend, because that's gonna be more encouraging for people to wear, you don't have to kind of go any certain style. It's what you want to photograph. It's items that you tend to like. There's some items I'll shoot once and I can't, I don't really like it, so I'll get rid of it. But then there's other items that I've had for years that still photograph beautifully, even though it might not be on trend or what you see a lot of people wearing in photographs. It kind of just depends. And every client is different too. So having kind of a wide range of things definitely helps. So when it comes to building your client closet, let's talk about sizing. Sizing is a question that I get a lot only because when you are going to have maybe a small client closet, it's a little bit harder to have something that's going to fit everyone. to go towards things that have texture whether it be lace or embroidery or kind of like an imprinted pattern I just think that especially for close-ups like once you start getting like really into close-ups um, textures and maybe small patterns on things kind of pop a little more like a little surprise and I think that uh, it just adds interest to your photographs having having something going on 
I do tend to lean towards uh, photographing neutral pieces and that just comes from being able to match things easier. So let's say a dress is white, but it has kind of little colored details on it. It's mainly neutral, but it has little tiny details on it that you can pull from to match the rest of the family to. Clothes that get a little loud and big vibrant colors and big vibrant prints, I still have in my client closet, but they don't necessarily get used as much. And I think that just ends up being because they're a little bit harder to match with things. So I would say just stick with neutrals, light colors, things that are easy to match other things with. In my client closet specifically, I do have mostly women's clothes. I would say 90% and then of those, probably 90% are dresses. That's just what I like to photograph. That goes back into creating a look that you like to photograph. So I do like moms in big flowy dresses, dancing in the wind. So that's what I tend to have in my client closet. I used to have a very large collection of little girls dresses also, but I've slowly gotten rid of those because everything I had seemed to be big and poofy and here in Hawaii, they really weren't getting worn that much. So I'm getting rid of those and I'm gonna start building it back up for a little more boho-y, flow-y, just kind of changing the look of the things that I have for where we live because big poofy princess dresses on the beach here are just kind of a mess. We're moving on from that. Um, I get off asked often a lot if I have anything for men in my client closet. I used to when we were in Oklahoma still. I did keep a few men's items. I kept a few men's shirts on hand, mostly long sleeve v-neck gray shirts just because that seemed to match everything. Um, cause I really got tired of men showing up in white button up shirts. That's like, or polo shirts. That's like the worst thing. Button up shirts fine. It's just, they would show up in these white button up shirts. And then because I, that seems to just be how people think for men, like, oh, a white button up shirt, it'll match everything. Not really my favorite look. So I would keep those shirts on hand again here in Hawaii. I've gotten rid of those because making men wear long sleeve shirts on the beach is not really it's not really a look so I am kind of looking around for a few more men's things but it's not something that really even got used enough for me to worry about so if I I did run into something I would probably grab it but it's nothing that is going to like make or break men are usually easy to dress so it's not something that I really worry about all right, one of the biggest questions that I get when people ask me about having a client closet would be cost. How much does it cost? How much should you put forward towards your client closet? What are ways to cut down on cost of things? So I do have a few ideas, some that I've used, some that I've heard other people use. Uh, I definitely shop secondhand. I really like finding items on places like Facebook Marketplace, uh, there's a lot of Facebook groups that tend to resell dresses. They bought it for a session or two or they're cleaning out their client closet and now they're selling it at a really good price because it's not new. I found some stuff on Poshmark here and there uh, from some brands that I like and again those are usually used so prices are much cheaper. You can also cut down on costs by renting or sharing. So a lot of photographers will buy a beautiful crazy expensive piece then they will rent it out to everyone for a fee to help kind of cover the cost of the item. So you have a dress that cost you $600, you rent it out to six people for a weekend at 100 bucks a pop, your dress is now free. In Oklahoma, I did what I was calling a shoot to keep session and I would find dresses online that I liked and I would kind of do a social media blast to get somebody interested in having their pictures taken in this dress. So the trade was they would buy this dress, I would photograph them in it, and I would get to keep the dress as payment. Sure, it was a little more work and for really no money, but I wasn't having to fork out money for this dress. I know some photographers have done it a as a trade, so if you buy a $100 dress, let me keep it and take $100 off your session. You can do that. I don't see that being as helpful for a client. It doesn't seem as appealing. 
And if it's something that you really want, it's kind of worth it. You end up with photos of the item also to show future clients, which is nice. I feel like it's an everybody win situation when you do that. The last question that I get a lot is how do you get clients to actually use items from your client closet? The first thing I tell them is you definitely cannot force it. You can't force somebody to wear something that they don't want to wear or some people already, they already have their outfits planned before they even find a photographer. They know what they want. They've been on Pinterest searching up and down. So it's not something that they even need help with or want help with. I always make sure to add in that first contact kind of, you know, when you're going over pricing and locations and what's included, I always, always, always mention that I do have a women's closet available for, for use. And they either say, oh cool, what do you mean by that? Or they ignore me and they don't care. And then I also bring it up again when they talk about wardrobe. So about a week out from a session, we'll start kind of talking about location and time and make sure they have everything they need for their wardrobe. I will mention again that I have a closet and if they want me to send them any photos, I just need to know their size. That will definitely get the moms too. If we're a week out and they still haven't figured out what to wear, that will get them thinking about the options that I have. Going back to consistency, the more often you shoot the dresses and the items that you like, the more people will want their photos to look like that. So when you're discussing locations or they send you a photo like, I want to go here, I love this photo, this is my favorite photo you took. If the photo they send you is an item that you have in your closet, offer it up. Say, hey, you know, we can go to that location and that's actually my dress and you are absolutely welcome to wear it if it fits. When somebody is kind of interested in wearing what you have, but they also have already chosen something that they want to have, it's very helpful to let them know that you're totally open to a wardrobe change. I don't really understand why some photographers don't allow wardrobe changes. It's very helpful in your business. You can get two different looks in the same photo shoot, making them so much happier and it takes like five minutes to change your clothes. So I always keep the option open to change clothes. So if they love what they're wearing, but they love what I'm offering, then change your clothes halfway through. Wear the dress you love and wear the dress that you love that's mine. It's totally fine. It keeps them really happy. They get everything they want and then they love both sets of photos because they got to wear that dress. 